Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of British Social American today with a J Foreman again. Hello, a J Foreman. A J Foreman. A J Foreman. One of the J Foreman. There is another J Foreman. There's a guy that plays for NFL who looks absolutely nothing like I've him. I've heard about this guy. Yeah, Football. people keep tweeting me thinking it's him. And I keep patiently saying, I oh, don't know, no, you, you want the other J Foreman. I get, there's one other Evan Enger and he's a doctor in Newfoundland of geology. <laughs> and so he does speeches and people tag me and I'm like, I must have been drunk. I don't remember that. So today we're going to be talking about advertising yes. in the US and the UK. There's a big difference. This is one of those that I think people immediately realize when they switch countries. First of all, do you know what percentage of the UK's like hour long TV is ads? Well, I do. Let's think. So you've done your homework. Whereas I've got to just intuit what percentage it is. I would say in the UK, I would hazard a guess at 10%. 10, it's actually 20. 20. 20%. That's double 10%. It's, there's an EU law that states that you cannot have more than 12 minutes per hour of advertising. We're pushing quite close to it. Yeah, whereas in the US, we're currently at somewhere around 16 to 17 minutes per thing. It's basically every half hour show is a 22 minute episode with eight minutes of ads. That sounds so, about right. It's, yeah. It's, Historically, it's always been this way. A great example that mm -hmm. comes to mind is The Muppet Show. Which looks ads during the Muppets? Well, um, the Muppet Show was a half an hour show, mm -hmm. but um, in the US it was twenty two minutes long, and yeah. in the UK it was twenty five minutes long, and that's why every episode of the Muppet Show had a two and a half minute segment called the UK spot, something that only we got to see, what? and you guys didn't because you were watching an advert for some sort of medicine. What I, I genuinely didn't know. Yes, for some sort of medicine. What, what what did we miss out on now? I've, my child you missed out on some of the best bits of The Muppet Show because the rule for the, I mean, this has become an episode about The Muppets, but the rule for the UK spot was mm -hmm. um, you couldn't involve the guest star okay, and it couldn't affect the plot of the show, which okay. usually meant that the bit you missed it's was like a filler bit. Oh. It was a song usually. Oh. And some of the funniest and weirdest songs were what we call the UK spot. So check that out. I'm going to be Googling go on YouTube, the UK spot. Search Muppet Show UK spot. And some of my favorite moments of The Muppet Show you guys never got to see. Well, you guys didn't get to see our amazing ads. True, we're missing out on those. <laughs> the stereotype in the UK for what American ads are like is they tend to be very long, drawn out infomercials where the T's and C's go on almost as long as the adverts. Abilify is not for everyone. Call your doctor if your depression worsens or you have unusual changes in behavior or thoughts of suicide. Call your doctor if you have high fever, stiff muscles, and confusion to address a possible life-threatening condition, or if you have uncontrollable muscle movements as these could become permanent. In some cases, extreme high blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Yes, we do have such a big issue in the US with drug advertisements. It's every ad is either a drug ad, a car ad, a local dealership ad, or mm -hmm. just some ad that's just screaming at you to buy something. But the drug ads are always like happy woman holding the product and then she's talking about something she couldn't do, she found the product, and then it's just, this might not be right for you. Ask your doctor <laughs> if you need this. If you have this, 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 30 seconds later she goes, I'm so glad I chose this, <laughs> and then that's it. Something that That's... I found particularly disturbing, I visited the US in 2014 or mm -hmm. thereabouts, and the thing that I found quite disturbing watching these adverts for medical stuff is, you gotta remember that adverts show you what you want at the end of this product. Mm -hmm. So most of the adverts that we see over here is show someone really happy because they've got a new shampoo mm -hmm. with better hair, or a new perfume, or a new car. Adverts for medicine, they show someone feeling fine. They're okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm not that bad. And we don't have that. We've got the NHS, and so there's no point advertising the sort of thing that we should just expect. Yeah. And if you think about it that way, oh, it's disturbing. Well, it's weird because like you, you're told basically get your doctor to prescribe you our drug as opposed to the rival drug. Yeah. Because our drug is the best drug, and it's which drives prices up. And it's yes. just, I mean, we can make a video about the NHS another time. But my God, I'm glad that's a thing we don't have over here. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I was over in the U.S. Uh, last month, I literally saw an ad with a dancing colon. <laughs> and he was just what trying was it for? It was for some... For a local car It was for a test, actually. To, to, for, it was for a test to see if you had colon cancer. You can now just do it in your home. With a dancing colon. If your colon's dancing, see your doctor. <laughs> Time to get your cancer checked. So here we have a Strongbow ad. I'll put it up on screen as well. Okay. In the UK, yep. showing, you know, a bloke with three pints. Gotta protect his seat. You know, he's got, his mates are protecting the seat, so he's buying it for everyone. As a classic way of carrying three beers. In the US, this is the same company. Different market. It's just women daintily holding their strong bows, right. and the caption is, which flavor goes best with your outfit? Cider in the US is viewed as this bougie thing, like, oh, cider, <laughs> I didn't choose beer today, I'm classy. And you to me, the UK, it's just like, oh, mate! <laughs> that to me, that was a very good accent. Uh, that to me looks like a difference not between the way we advertise, but, but who, who we're, we're advertising to, yeah? Exactly the words I was going to use, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I'd say I agree with that, but as well, I genuinely don't see much cider ads in the US. Like, that's just not really a thing. There are some products that mm -hmm. we both have in our respective countries, but we use them in a different way. And an example that comes to mind is crisps. 
because you have potato chips, but you don't tend to put them in your lunch boxes one packet at a time. You have them in great big sharing bags. I hated that about this country. I got here, you get like a giant bag of Frito-Lay, and you open it, and there's just more bags. Yeah. I just want to be able to go home and just eat all of them in one go. You can eat the packaging. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't, but you can eat, we can eat whatever you want. I, I guess it makes it less shareable. I'm expecting like a big bag. Nah, nah, nah. In this country, you're not supposed to share your crisps. You no, eat just them furtively in the office. They're all for you. One thing that I think is genuinely going to blow your mind. You know... This is better blow my mind. This is going to blow your mind. You know Seinfeld, the TV show? Yes. One of my favorites. It's very American. I don't really think it would work in the UK. But when reruns are shown on our channel TBS, they speed up the show by up to 10% to fit more ads in. That's not nice, is it? No. I mean, if you speed up a show by 10%, you assume You're that ruining the, the timing. The voices get higher pitched and everyone seems like they're in a bit of a rush. Yeah, they think they've clocked it at most 9% when the people have been checking this, but just so they could fit an extra ad break in, which doesn't break the clause of what the, the company signed up for, but I couldn't imagine making a TV show and just having people ruin the timing of everything. It's just... That seems quite lazy. I mean, well, yes. um, these issues have been fixed now, but a big difference between the US and UK TV, we used mm -hmm. to have different TV broadcasting systems, which meant that you would often have something from America play back faster on British TV because you guys have 29.97 frames oh, per second and mm -hmm. we have 25. Or is it 24? Someone has 24 point like 24.59 or something like that, I don't really know. I think it's to do with the way our plugs work. Yeah, this is there, shooting up power versus all, NTSC. Yes, there's, there's videos there. all over YouTube about exactly why this is. But something that used to happen when we watched clips from American TV in the 80s and 90s... Would just speed it up? Uh, no, worse than that, you would be able to tell that it was originally from US TV because the screen looked a bit yellow and a bit washed out and a bit weird and blurry. And that's because you try to convert the frame rate for British TV. It doesn't happen anymore, but it used to be Whoa. that American TV looked kind of weird and a bit warped. And that's why everyone didn't like it over here, I guess. You probably that thought everything was it, yeah. The Simpsons, you never know. Well, genuinely, programs that were shot on film mm -hmm. have lasted longer and work better to be rerun than, than programs that were sh shot on tape. Oh. This is just something I noticed when I first moved here. In the US, we love our car ads. The car ads are very much like, I'm driving this car and it's freaking awesome. This is the best car. You need to buy this car. Come down to the dealership, buy the car. In the UK, when I saw like car ads at the cinema, it would just be B-roll shots of like a tunnel, a guy driving, just a little bit of a narration. And then it doesn't even tell you to buy the car at the end. It's just like, it's a cool car. There was no call to action. There was no buy, 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 buy. It was just, you know, just... Yeah, well, just this fine. is the stereotype of American advertising. Yeah, just... Is that it is rammed down your throat and you've normally got a really friendly, big, boisterous, boi uh, boisterous voiceover guy in an American accent that I can't be bothered to do. But we don't have that. We don't want it. I, I, it felt much more polite, I guess. I'm just so used to ads being, like, telling me I need this. Mm -hmm. And the UK, they're just like, it'd be cool if you had this, but... Yeah, we, uh, we, we, prefer, we prefer to be nudged than yeah. to be told what to do. Yeah, but I think that's, that's what I like more about UK ads, is, is that bit of a less obtrusiveness feeling. Well, I think probably one of the very biggest differences between US advertising and UK advertising mm -hmm. is the blurriness between the, I'm going to use the C word, between the content mm -hmm. and the adverts. So something that, ah. for example, would happen in America, you would watch, for example, The Flintstones, mm -hmm. and then just before the end of the episode, Fred Flintstone mm -hmm. would turn to the camera and say, by the way, kids, smoke Winston cigarettes because they taste good. The Flintstone has been brought to you by Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarettes. It still tastes good like a cigarette should. We wouldn't do that over here. You don't do that? You've never done that? No, we... Ah, well, this is where it gets interesting. Um, up until 1992-ish, mm -hmm. we used to have very, very, very strict rules on advertising. Possibly the strictest in the world. Where you had the stuff, you had the show... And then you had the ads. And then you had the ads. And there would have to be a very, very clear distinction between the two. Mm -hmm. You would have the logo of the TV channel you were watching, the screen would go black for a bit, then the advert start, and there would be no blurring of the two. They relaxed those laws a little bit, so you were, you were, from the mid-90s, allowed to say, this particular program is brought to you by this particular brand. Yeah. Which, you know, to We us, have that in the US a lot. You've had that for decades, but yeah. when that first came along in the 90s, I remember seeing it going, what the, what the hell? That's <laughs> very American and not welcome. But oh. it's very normal now. And something else that we also were very strictly against until quite recently was product placement. What oh, we have in the UK now... over in the US. Uh, oh. Yeah, well, that's the thing that you guys are famous for. We <sighs> used to resist it quite vociferously. That's a lovely word quite vociferously, vociferously in the UK until recently. But what you have now is if there is product placement in your show, you have to have a little P appear in the bottom corner before the show starts so that you know something in the show is going to be advertised. <laughs> Who's like looking this? Yeah. Brand new iPhone available now from your local Apple store. Mmm, iPhone, delicious. 
That's, yeah, I, I still feel yeah. like, I mean, that's how they're trying to do it in the UK with uh, YouTube as well, in terms of you have to say if it, there's promoted product. Which I think it's a good idea. You should say it, you're promoting something. But I never knew the P thing. Well, this is an interesting thing about YouTube. Um, I, not to plug my own stuff too much, but basically, as far as I know, I'm one of the very, very few YouTubers that subscribes to the pre-1990 something model mm -hmm. where the advertising and the content you came for are very separate. That's why if mm -hmm. you look at my channel, you've got the, hi guys, you've got the, um, the thing, you've got yeah. the video, the screen will then go black and then, and then the advert will start. I mean, I like that, but then again, I guess, uh, so there's so many advertisers nowadays that are begging people to be like, can you put the ad in the beginning? And can you oh, no. give a heartwarming story about our company? And it's like, no. That, no, I, yes, know. I love Candy Crush so much. People know, people watching, they know full well the difference yeah. between what they came to see and, and what, words yeah. that we are saying under duress. So I think it's much better and more honest mm -hmm. to just declare this is an advert, I am being forced to say this. But what I do on my channel, if you want to go over and check it out, is I make the adverts very silly and funny. So, so do it makes check you out worth adverts. watching the ad because it's more fun. I think you and uh, Drew Gooden, who's an American YouTuber, he does the same thing. Like after he's done his video, he makes a sketch of the ad that's very much still in the same style, yeah. but there is no black, it's just Usually he interrupts himself from the outro to be Oh, like, I've seen these, yeah. Oh, yeah, and he's like, oh, by the way, have you known NordVPN? Yeah, something like that. Uh, but I like that style because it's, it's Other VPNs are available. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how PBS advertises? PBS, as far as I know, is the um, publicly funded educational network mm -hmm. in the US. And, we've got um, Arthur, you know, we've got a lot of fun shows that are teaching kids stuff. But PBS it's, is where Sesame Street started, isn't yep, it? Yep. That's where it still is in the US, yes, I believe. that's where it still um, lives. Do I know how it's funded? I assume from your question that it's not funded in the normal way and that it's something you pay for? Well, no, no, PBS is one of the very few channels that just comes on every TV without cable. So when you get a TV oh. in the US, you actually get, you know, PBS and then three news channels. I think it's like channel two, channel four, and channel three. Mm -hmm. Maybe channel 10 if you're lucky. And so you get to have PBS, which is, you know, kids channel for education, it's funded by the government, but at the end slash in the middle of every episode of like Arthur or whatever you're watching, you'll be like, this episode of Arthur is brought to you by Juicy Juice. <laughs> and it's like the voice of Arthur saying it. Or same they, with Family Guys. They still guys. do that even now. Yeah. And I, I grew up like that, like so, I'm so used to it, it's just, it's natural, but now that I think about it, I'm like, I don't know if I really like that, but... I... Well, over here, it's something that we've always found to be a bit vulgar, mm -hmm. and especially on kids' TV. You guys don't allow advertisements to kids that have sugar in it. Uh, that's a very new thing. Um, I remember... Blows my up, mind. We had all sorts of adverts for, you know, things that were disgustingly bad for you when I was a kid, but it's something incredibly recently, I think it's just in the last five minutes, they've introduced this legislation that you can't have sugary products on mm. kids' TV. And it, that is a good thing. I think that's a brilliant thing, because growing up, I was just, just shoveled all these different ads for like different cereals and different candies and try a baby bottle pop, you know, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Whereas now, I guess, if I was a kid watching a kid show, I wouldn't expect sugary cereals to be promoted to me. That's, I don't know, that's a good law. I wish the US had that, because that's protecting Your time kids. will come, I think it will happen. When I Unless you've kids. got sugar people lobbying the government. Which is which what is they're doing. Is there any other type of thing that kids aren't allowed to be advertised to? Um, um, cocaine, heroin. Burglary. Dark. Burglary. Yeah. A YouTuber was under fire because I think they worked with a product that was mostly sugar and because their audience was mostly was it kids, sugar? It was it was just a bag of sugar. <laughs> Do you remember any ad jingles? I don't growing know, up? all the ad jingles. <laughs> but Coco Pops used to have the song, We'd rather have a bowl of Coco Pops. But here's that's a good sound. Here's, Ooh, here's the thing that's confusing though. Mm. They don't quite explain enough in that jingle. You'd rather have a bowl of Coco Pops than, than what? It depends. I mean, if someone says to me, hey, would you like this cucumber that's been in the cupboard for several weeks I'd and it's gone off and there's steam of coming off it, I'd rather have a bowl of Cocoa Pops. Even a bowl of Cocoa Pops is better than that. Is that what they meant? What's annoying is there were so many different ads with jingles in my area. Not all were just big companies. They were localized ads. Like, do you This get... brings us to another discussion. Localized Local TV. Well, ah. now, British TV, mm -hmm. by and large, is the same across the country. Mm -hmm. The only time that you get regional variation, usually nowadays, is the news. So, at the, for example, at the end of BBC News, at half six, they'll say, and now we can join the news teams in your area. And then you'll, oh. get, um, you'll get a local news bulletin, which is, well, I say local, it's regional. It'll mm -hmm. normally be a big section of the country that's got no more than about three million people. London is by far the most populated yeah. of all of the, the different regions. It didn't used to be this way. Right up until the mid-90s, mm -hmm. ITV was not a channel. It was a network of regional channels. Oh. And they would, by coincidence, usually play the same programs up and down the country, but there'd be quite a lot of regional variation. There'd be a lot of locally made programs about local things. But that's disappeared because TV is really expensive to make, and so yeah. no one has the budget anymore to make local content. And that is why 
nowadays, the only time that you have local or regional TV mm -hmm. is in the news or in the, you know, in the case of channels like London Live TV, which has literally hundreds of viewers. Out of curiosity then, do you not have local ads for each area? Like Liverpool has ads that are targeting Liverpoolians? As far as I know, and feel free to correct me on this because I might be wrong, but I think, no. Oh my! You like, used to, but you certainly don't now. Because where I'm from, like ads are so incredibly specific. I'll have an ad for a dealership, Matt Blatt's car dealership in Glassboro, New Jersey, or there'll be an ad just for the mattress warehouse down the road that's specifically to our area. No, we have, as far as I know, we have what? nothing like that. I always used to find it really strange on American film and TV. Mm -hmm. Every time you see the news mm -hmm. uh, being talked about in a film or TV show, it's the very local news, and they say yeah. here in the little tiny city of Little Upper Watcher Progment Sport, whatever the name of the town is. I live there has its own TV station, and we don't have that. But something that we do have, curiously, we've stolen a phrase from you. We keep on saying, on national TV. Yeah. Can you believe this is happening on national TV? And that's always annoyed me, because in the UK... Everything's national TV. Exactly, all oh. TV is national TV, but we still use that term because it makes it sound more grandiose. I wouldn't be surprised to find someone saying coast to coast when talking about British TV, <laughs> just because it sounds about right. Yeah, it's because like we would watch the news, and it would be the Philadelphia area news. But yeah. sometimes you'd also be syndicated all across the rest of the US if it was a big, big news story. So I guess that makes sense. But Whereas we... over here, the vast, vast, vast majority of TV is coast to coast. I just feel like if I lived in like Edinburgh, I wouldn't give a crap what was going down in London, you know? Well, exactly. That's why you have, at the end of the national news, you the have local the local news. Oh, local okay, news. okay, that makes way more sense. So that way it's more, you, like you said, it's not as expensive because it's not a whole studio just for Edinburgh, it'd be just at the end. I think Scotland, uh, as far as the BBC is concerned, Scotland counts as just one region. Edinburgh <laughs> does have, I uh, feel free to correct me about this, it does have a local TV station, okay. but it has even fewer viewers than London Live TV. Do you know what the Calgon song is? Calgon? Is it the song about washing machines live longer with Calgon? Yeah. Then I yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, that's just a British ad. We always had... Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I, that was it. I asked people downstairs like what British ads were that they would know the jingles to. Of all the iconic British advertising they thought of from the last 50 <laughs> something years of advertising on British TV, and that's the one thing we've come up with? Washing machines live longer with Calgon? Ours would just be jingles that had phone numbers in them, so I'd, I literally have like 800 588 2300 Empire. Oh, we have that. Today. Oh, you have Empire? 891 50 50 50. <laughs> wait. In the comment section, tell him what that is. Wait, oh my gosh, wait. You guys have a. We have Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace, and you guys have a different version of this. Um, auto glass repair, yeah. <laughs> auto glass replace. It's the same exact I in, jingle. I, I lived in France 10 years ago and they have carcasse repair, carcasse remplace. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite part of this whole thing now. It's just that. Have you ever seen the, um, the adverts for Haribo? No. So over here it goes, kids and grown ups love it so, the happy world of Haribo. But if you look carefully on the packaging, you've got a similar jingle that rhymes in lots of different languages around Europe. Oh. I did their research. Haribo, c'est beau la vie pour les grands et les petits. You can speak French? Oui. I thought you were going to say, no, but I really like the advertising of Haribo. I'm, I'm pretending to speak French. That was all just gibberish. But as far as you're concerned, it's French. That about does it for this video on the advertising in the UK and the US. If we missed out on anything that you thought was interesting, please be sure to leave a comment or correct us if we made anything oh, wrong. Oh, we missed out loads. Oh, boy. Uh, if you want, you can click a, another video to watch here. Or please be sure to check uh, Jay's channel out in the description. You want oh, to give yes, please. Thank sell? you. Please do that. Thank you very much. Oh, Sel, uh, my channel is called Jay Foreman. I make uh, very, very silly educational videos about geography, politics, and cities, and town planning, and so on. So, subscribe, subscribe, and I've also subscribe, got very subscribe. silly adverts at the end of my videos, and there's a current series called Map Men with Map TV's Men. Mark Cooper-Jones. So please do check that out. Thank you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.